Now that we know what positions are, let's talk a bit about position registers or PRs. I've made a little program here that's basically going to perform these steps. Let me go ahead and basically establish a user frame, 15, tool frame, 8. Go to my uh, home position here. I'm going to change this to a linear position as well as this one. I'm at my home position. I go to my approach and then dip down. I haven't labeled these because I plan on turning these into position registers. Um, and if you notice, I'm working with a split screen because that's the method for really working with position registers. The split screen is just set up by hitting shift display, going to double, and I have a side-by-side -side screen here. Um, I hit display again and I bounce from one screen to the other. On the right-hand screen, I'm going to set this up to be data, and it might have been you know, just under registers when you got there, um, when you hit data. Um, but basically, if you hit data and then either type and go to position registers, um, that's mostly what you'll be working with, our registers and position registers. And then I'm going to look and see that there's 301. Uh, I'll have a program plan normally set up, but for this demonstration, I'm going to grab three that are empty. And I'll grab 300 to 302 here. And um, the benefit of having a position register is that I can use a position I've taught in this platform here, which this is matched geometry here. This is the same exact fixture, only at an angle here in a different location. I can, all the positions I teach here for the pick and place of batteries to put into these slots and to put into these holes, I can do, um, I can repeat them or uh, use them, reuse them on this angled platform. And let me just demonstrate how that's done. So initially I would go to these positions here. I'm going to hit display and go back to my original display. Um, the, you can only do motion in, in the left hand screen. So I'm going to go to my home position. And I want to teach that as a position register so that I can go to the same home no matter what um, user frame I have active. So if I come over here, I've got the ability to change this to a choice. I'm going to put PR and I'm going to call this 300. And right now, there's no position information in there because I've changed it to a PR, which is not true because there must be PR information. Yeah, these are actually indeed not empty, which is probably a good example because then I'll show you how I, I messed up. Um, let me go back and do three that are actually empty here, um, 335 through 338. So let me bounce back over here, call this 335. And now it's, not, it's highlighted now, so it's showing it's empty. Um, and basically when I come back over and look at that positional information, it has all these empty asterisks in it, meaning there's no in number information there. So what I have to do is actually hit shift and actually I have to get in the right location here, shift and touch up. And you notice it now has the at symbol showing me I'm at that PR right now. And if I look at the positional information over in the other screen for 335, it's now registered, um, and if I look at the position information for it, it's got a bunch of relevant information. And basically, it's telling me I'm out in the X25 and um, down in the Z156, or I'm up in the Z, well, Z156. That is all relevant to the current user frame, which I've taught user frame 15, the current one, uh, with an origin right here. So this is my zero, zero point, and up um, 156, and over 25 and over 122 is where I'm at right now with a accurate tool center point, which is my TCP8, which is this pointer tool. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's go back to my original display, come back to P2. I'm going to jog to that position. And then I'm going to change this one to a PR as well. Um, and then choice, PR, next available is 336. I hit it, it's empty, but I still have my robot at that location, which is critical. This is the, the steps you have to go through, the six steps that are listed. Um, so now I want to hit a touch up, 
And if I notice, 336 is now um, registered as well over here. So if I hit the display, come down to 336. Oops, go to previous, 336. I was actually in the position for 335. That's why it wasn't listed as recorded. So now watch when I come back over to display and go to my third position, which is just dipping down into this hole. Notice that um, when I change this to 337, choice, enter, 337, and I hit enter. It's null and void over here because there's no positional information on it. And I look into 337 and look at the position. Yeah, it's just nothing's there. That's why I have to touch it up. I have to create a position, go to that position, then touch it up um, over in the... I can actually do that over here as well. Uh, so let me go over here and I can do um, uh, record, shift record while I'm at that position. And it does the same exact thing as a touch up in the other screen. So. Let's pretend I didn't actually have that third position there. Um, I would jog to that position. Uh, let me just go to delete this. I would jog to this position I'm in right now, which I want to create a PR in. And I actually have to create a point first. And then I have to come up and change that point to a PR. And then I put in that 30. Let me do 338 just to demonstrate. 338. And it's no information in there. So I have to bounce back out and um, touch it up. Now, it's always important to have you know home approach and my uh, poke is what I'll call it. So I want to put a, a label in here, but you notice I can't. I can't do that because with PRs you're, you're using them and for uh, globally. So they want you to actually come to the PR section and go to that. Uh, position register 335 is my home and I can go over the labeling portion of it and then just type in home approach and I'm going to call this just poke And notice when I look at my program here, it's actually put those labels in. So if I, I um, you know what, that was 338 I did. I be um, careful. Um, so poke. I'll call this poke one. Okay. Um, and you notice now they're labeled in my program because. I might use these these in 16 different programs, and they would all. Here's why I would change the um, label for it, and would change it wherever it's wherever those positions are used. Um, remember, if I use a position register, it's not the same as a position. A position one in one program is different than a position one in a different program. They can have completely different information. In it. A PR335 is the same in every single program that it's used in. So. Let me go back to my program here. Um, do a Z up. Go to the top of my program here and step through this. Okay, and we all know the trick of just adding points, right? And going uh, point, point. And you wonder why did I do that? Because I'm going to come here and change these to a PR and put a 336 to come back to my approach point, which is a retraction, and go choice, PR, 336, I'm sorry, 335, and back to home. Now, let me Z up, step through this program, and shift forward, take it out of step, Pretty confident this is going to work just fine. Come down, boom, boom, out, and then back home. Okay, now here's the real efficient pro part of the programming. I'm going to come in here and do a copy. I'm going to select the whole program, copy, come down here and do a paste. Position ID is position uh, uh, verbatim. Whatever I copied, it's pasting. 
uh, line numbers and everything. Except up here, I'm gonna change this U-frame number to 14. Now you see the power of this. Hold on a second. And you'll see me step through this program. It comes down and dips in this hole. And now changes user frames and dips inside this hole. So you can get the point of what's happening here is I've now used that information because these are identical. And I had a user frame 15 that was taught on this corner right here. I picked, I, I did my programming in this platform here and then just duplicated it and applied it to this user frame because its origin is in the same relevant point and it's user frame 14, which I changed in the program when I did the paste to 14 here. So I get to actually reuse all these points. So you'll, you'll teach a, a number of points picking and placing in this fixture. And it's often you'll have a repeat of many fixtures and you can just use those PRs to you know, decrease your programming in half or third or depending on how many fixtures you have that are duplicate. So that's PRs in a quick overview.